Hello and welcome to my video demonstrating playing chords on the Novation Bass Station 2. Let me first introduce the synthesizer a little bit to you. I can say that this is one of my favorite synthesizers. I've had it for around about six years and I would say it really is my go-to for mono sounds. Um, let me describe a little about the architecture. So first we have two oscillators. The, uh, these are DCOs. That means they are analog oscillators whose pitch is controlled digitally by a counter. In addition to the two primary oscillators, which are controlled through this one section using this switch to select which, um, we've got a sub oscillator, which can be one or two octaves below the main oscillator. We have three waveforms available there, two of which are kind of pulse waves. The main oscillators, we have four separate waveform types. We also have pulse width modulation available on the two main oscillators by the LFO or by the mod envelope. In the mixer section, we can mix the uh, two main oscillators and the sub oscillator. We also have the ability to mix in external audio. There is a ring mod between the two main oscillators and there is a noise source. The filter section, surprisingly for this type of synth, contains two filters. There is a classic filter, which is um, pretty unique to the base station too, but also similar to the one on the peak and now the summit, which is available at 12 and 24 dB per octave slope in low pass, band pass, and high pass. Additionally, there is an acid style diode ladder filter, which is available only in 24 dB and only in low pass mode. But if you want that type of sound, then it's available to you. Now the filter section, there is a filter drive. We have a resonance control and um, a couple of other modulation controls, as well as a nice big cutoff knob. There is an effects section. Um, the distortion is certainly an effect. It's an analog distortion, which gets applied after the filter. So you can really add some sort of dirt to the sound. We also have oscillator filter mod. So oscillator number two can be used to modulate the cutoff frequency. In terms of modulation, we have two envelopes available to us one of which controls the amplifier. The other one is called the mod envelope because it can be used for various things such as controlling the oscillator pitch or controlling the filter cutoff. You can set them individually from here or you can select them simultaneously. We've got two LFOs available to us. Um, the LFOs can be synced, key synced and tempo synced. You can also slew limit those, which brings me, I guess, to the secondary functions on the keyboard. The majority of what you want to do is available directly on the panel. For example, we could delay the onset of operator two, we could adjust the speed of uh, LFO two, but if we wanted to adjust how much moving the mod wheel adjusts the filter cutoff frequency or the LFO one routing to pitch, we would press a function and we would press one of these keys and then we can use these buttons to adjust it. In addition to what is written above the keys, a series of additional updates were made enabling new features on the keyboard. For example, oscillator instability, uh, filter keyboard tracking adjustment, um, to name a few, um, loopable envelopes, for example. Anyway, getting back to the panel, we have a glide setting, Portamento, and we have a sequencer and arpeggiator section. Notice they just call it arpeggiator. You can record sequences. The sequences can be 32 steps long, and they will be played by pressing keys on the keyboard, and they will transpose as you play up and down, which can be helpful. Additionally, instead of playing at a fixed rhythm, we have a rhythm control, which allows us to arpeggiate and change the rhythm the arpeggio is played in. So this adds for some quite interesting variations. In any case, I'm, my zero patch is an init patch. So here we are. Okay, just a single buzzy saw wave. What we would like to do then is understand how to play a chord. You might say, well, this is a monophonic synthesizer. That is true. 
And one of the ways that we often play a chord on a monophonic synthesizer is to tune the three oscillators to three different pitches representing a chord. However, um, we actually only have two oscillators here. We have a sub oscillator, but the sub oscillator, according to the panel, can only be set one or two octaves below. However, since the sub oscillator is actually controlled by the digital timer and not directly from the timing on oscillator one, we actually have the ability to tune it independently thanks to the firmware update. So let me turn down everything except the sub oscillator. So this is playing a sine wave. Um, so what we can do is I can latch that with the latch button, press function, turn the coarse tuning knob. Here the pitch is changing. So what's happening here is I'm actually tuning the sub oscillator. I can tune it in tenths of a semitone. So let me unlatch. Let me turn up oscillator 1. Uh, let me switch oscillator 1 to be also a sine wave, oscillator 2 also a sine wave. So you can hear now we have two pitches playing. We have the pitch of the note that I'm pressing, and we have another note playing five semitones below. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Five semitones is a fourth, which is the mirror image of a fifth. So in other words, down a fourth and up a fifth do the same thing for us. So in other words, what I'm playing here is effectively this C and this G, or this F sharp and this B. Okay, so we have a fixed interval as a fifth. So you might say to yourself, well, that works perfectly well. How do I play a chord? Well, an obvious way to play a chord would be to bring in the other oscillator, which at the moment is playing in unison with the first oscillator, but to tune it up, let's say one, two, three semitones. So what I'm playing here now is, when I press any one key, I play a fifth, but the octave below, and I play a minor third above. So what I'm playing is the second inversion of a minor triad. But in reality, I don't always want to play a minor triad. It's not particularly convenient to say, oh, now I want a major one. Let me retune it. Now I want to play uh, sus2. Okay, so retuning is not going to be a very convenient way of approaching this. And there is a feature which comes to our rescue here, which is known as paraphonic mode. So first, let me describe what it means to be paraphonic. In the context of a monophonic synthesizer, we only have a single VCA or voltage controlled amplifier with a single envelope to drive it. We only have a single filter with a single envelope, which can also drive that. So what that means is we can only articulate one sound at any given moment. If we're therefore playing a chord through, all the tones of the chord will be articulated simultaneously. Paraphony is the ability to have, when I press two keys on the keyboard, one oscillator track the pitch of one of them, one oscillator track the pitch of the other. How do we enable paraphonic mode? Very straightforward. We press function and we press the oscillator one to sync button. We press it again and now it becomes our paraphonic mode selection. Change paraphony to one and now, So when I press the second note, the second oscillator now sounds at the pitch of that second note. Slightly confusing though is when I only press one, the oscillators sound in unison. So what's actually happening here is oscillator one and two are both playing a C and the sub oscillator is playing this G. As soon as I press this E, now oscillator 1 is playing the C, oscillator 2 is playing the E, and sub-oscillator is playing the G. So if I want to play a chord, it makes sense to press these keys simultaneously. If I don't press them at the same time, I'm going to hear them sound in unison, 
and then go to their respective pitches. So first thing to be aware of. Um, now I want to shape this sound a little bit. And the first thing to do to shape that sound, I think, given that it's paraphonic, I can't reasonably introduce and remove sounds. So what I'm going to do is make the sound quite short so we can play it as a stab. So the way I'm going to do that is I've selected the amp envelope here. Um, I'm going to listen. Tiny bit of attack just to soften the initial transient up. Now I'm adjusting the decay time. So I have the release time slightly below the decay time. So if I hold it, I get a slightly longer note. Next, for the mod envelope, I might like a little bit of transient on here just to give me some more interest. So at the very beginning, I'd like something that sounds like just a little, little pluck. So to emphasize this, there are a couple of things that I'm going to do. First, a sine wave effectively has no harmonics. It is simply the fundamental pitch. So it's not very good for working with a filter. So I'm going to switch all of my oscillators over to a square wave. So the sub oscillator has a narrow pulse wave and a square wave. Oscillator one has a pulse wave. Oscillator two has a pulse wave. So you can hear now we have those square wave harmonics. Okay, so. Um, now let me turn the filter down. And let me turn up the filter modulation amount. Let me try some resonance. Maybe I'll try overdrive a little. Just a little bit, maybe a little noise. So one thing you may note here is The envelopes are re-triggering every time I press or release a key. This is because the triggering mode is set to multi. This means it will re-trigger every time a note is added or removed. So if I play legato, we're going to have re-triggering of notes. And if I try and play a chord, we're having re-triggering. In this case, since it's a chord, it doesn't make as much sense to have that sound. So instead, I'm going to switch to single. So now we can hear, we have that chord stab, we're playing the second inversion, and all we do is play a lower note, which is going to be the first, and an upper note, which is the other part of our chord. So what does it give us access to? Sus2, minor triad, major triad, sus4, a sixth chord, a seventh chord, and sort of a, a major seventh chord. So what we've been able to do here is to make it reasonable and playable to play a range of different types of chord as opposed to just tuning an oscillator. Let's have a quick experiment with some of the sound modifying options we have. Let's try a narrow pulse there. Let's try and turn um, Let's make both of these into narrower pulses. And let's turn a little bit of LFO modulation on each of them. Okay, maybe I'll turn the drive up a little more. All right, lower down. Maybe I'll try and adjust the filter tracking amount. So by default, zero means full tracking, seven means no tracking. So now the filter doesn't track pitch here. Okay, so um, hopefully this has illustrated that you can get chords 
and you can get playable chords from a monophonic synthesizer. As I've mentioned, this is probably my favorite synthesizer, if not one of my favorite synthesizers at least. It is, I think, an excellent synthesizer for a beginner because it has a simple enough interface that it's very approachable, but it has enough depth that you're not going to find yourself outgrowing it too quickly. Uh, in any case, enough of the advertising spiel. Uh, it suffices to say, I'm very happy that you watched this video today, and I hope to see you again. But for now, goodbye.